Today it's just another game, but these players, who are the Hamilton Tiger Cats, know better. And so do these players. 228 days ago, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders took the Grey Cup from the Tiger Cats. The CFL season opens tonight with the rematch as the road to the 1990 Grey Cup begins at Taylor Field. Seven months ago, the Rough Riders and Tie Cats may have set an all-time high CFL standard at the Sky Dome in Toronto. Tie Cat coach Al Bruno tried everything. Saskatchewan's John Gregory quietly motivated his team in a game that had it all. 48 seconds remaining. Third down, Hamilton. was ecstatic, but Saskatchewan wasn't finished. A 35-yard attempt for David Ridgway. It's up. It's good. John Gregory's reaction represented the thoughts of an entire province. Yeah, I want to dedicate this to the people of Saskatchewan because they've been with us for an awful long time. So, for the first time in 23 years, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders begin the season as defending Grey Cup champions. be a better way to open our CFL on CBC season than with a rematch of the two teams involved in what could have been the greatest game ever played. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Taylor Field in Regina. Well, things are going well in Saskatchewan these days. They're expecting a bumper crop. The Rough Riders are defending Grey Cup champions, and there should be a full house here at Taylor Field tonight. Yes, it's perfect so far, but now it's up to the Riders to play like defending champions. The Ticats would simply like to exercise the demons that have plagued them since that day at the Sky Dome last November. So you see, this is a game to catch the fancy of many people, including my colleagues in the broadcast booth here at Taylor Field in Regina, Don Whitman and Ron Lancaster. Thanks, Scott. Hi again, everybody. After a prolonged celebration, Ron, of that 43-40 win, there's been preparation, but very little alteration to the Saskatchewan lineup as they try and defend the Grey Cup. That's right. You know, championships are built by being together for a long time, so you don't expect changes. Only two changes in Saskatchewan this year. Harry Skipper's gone at the corner, replaced by a rookie, Stacey Hairston, and their kicker, Baker's in Ottawa, and he's being replaced by Mike Wazeki. So champions don't change too much. On the other hand, Hamilton's made changes, mostly out of necessity. Mike Walker played out his option. He's a big, big loss. Tony Champion is gone, and the other one, Jed Tommy, in that offensive backfield did a lot of blocking for Mike Kerrigan. So they've made more changes, but they're still pretty solid. Is it possible in this season opener, Ron, to even come close to what we witnessed at the Sky Dome? I don't think so. I think that's the greatest game I've ever seen. And if we can get anything close to that, we'll be off to a great start. Well, the Hamilton Tiger Cats and Saskatchewan Rough Riders are just about set to launch the 1990 season. Scott? Don, on Live at the Half tonight, we'll talk to some of the principals involved in that great Grey Cup game and see how it affected their careers. We'll also get an early idea if the Ottawa free agent spending spree in the offseason was worth it when we see highlights of the Ottawa-Winnipeg season opener currently being played at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. And here at Taylor Field in Regina, we'll be joined live by Saskatchewan General Manager Al Ford. That's all on Live at the Half here at Taylor Field. You're watching the CFL on CBC, live from Regina. Beautiful summer evening in southern Saskatchewan. The temperature 25 degrees. As usual, there is a wind, and that could be a factor here at Taylor Field. Out of the south at 24 kilopascals per hour. And the gentleman in charge tonight is Ken Lazarek as Paul Osbaldiston moves up to the football, and the 1990 season is underway with the rookie Stacy Hairston returning the kickoff to the 21-yard line. He has tremendous speed. He was signed at a free agent camp in Shreveport, and he will be tested playing that corner tonight. An 18-yard run back after a 72-yard kickoff. Well, Ken Austin's finally got his wish. He's the number one guy. He's got to make it go. He led the CFL 56% completion last year. This year, they're going to count on him to go a little farther. 
They don't anticipate too many blitzes from the Hamilton Tiger Cats, a team not noted for throwing people in at the quarterback, and the first pass complete to Donald Narcisse for a first down out at the 41-yard line. Not a bad way to start. The saying in Saskatchewan is that Austin and Narcisse have such great rapport as far as running patterns and getting open that they can complete a pass any time they call it. That's why we have Austin and Narcisse as two of the offensive keys. The other guy they got to get in the ball game is Tim McCray. Maybe him, we got him and McAdoo, two of the best runners in the league. Mark Guy takes the pass, but will be held to a gain of about two yards. Wilkerson, the rookie, playing the cornerback on the far side, made the tackle. No surprise. They're going to go after Wilkerson right away. I figure one of the defensive keys for Hamilton is number 20. A rookie at the corner. Anytime a quarterback sees that, you know he's going after him. I think Jim Rockford in the middle. Remember the plays he makes from there. Ronnie Glanton took Mike Walker's position. That's a key spot on that line. From the shotgun on second down, Mark Guy has a first down at midfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage again. You got Mark Guy running the pattern on Gary Wilkerson in his rookie season. He's going to give him a little bit of room, and a good quarterback will go to work. That's two plays in a row right to him. Shotgun formation looking to his left right now. Just a turn-in pattern. You see no help underneath. That means Wilkerson has to almost allow him to catch the ball and make the hit. First down for midfield. The first running play with a penalty flag as Tim McRae gets inside the 50. Penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Ken Lazarek will give the signal offside against the Tigers. John Gregory, coach of the year in the Canadian Football League, 9-9 nine and nine during the regular season, but then he won three postseason games in Calgary, in Edmonton, and the big one at the Sky Dome. Hamilton number 77, first down repeater. The offside call against veteran Grover Covington, the all-time sack leader in the Canadian Football League, with 148 to his credit. It's first and five now. It will be first and five from just inside the 50. The pitch to McRae, Roger Aldag in front blocking, and McRae will be about a yard short of the first down. They got Aldag outside to block for McRae, and he almost enabled him to turn that corner. Well, you see McRae, you watch number 38 for Hamilton come into the picture. That's the middle linebacker, Corbin. He tried to cut inside, and by doing that, if he goes outside, he will fill the hole. He gambled and lost that time, and that opens up for McRae. Just good offense. Riders send in their short yardage unit. I think you'll see a lot more work out of Nelson Jones this year as a ball carrier. He hasn't handled it so far on second down. Though. Austin is throwing for Narcisse. Incomplete. Not a bad call on second and one because on third and one, I'm certain that they will be gambling. Oh, sure. They're going to go for it. And you saw Hamilton drop three deep. They kept three people back. They were anticipating some sort of a trick play on second and one. And they had Jim Rockford, he slipped coming over to help out on the coverage. Lance Shields made the play. Narcisse comes out wide to the right. Three backs in behind quarterback Kent Austin. He keeps and diving straight ahead should have the first down. Back into the ball game from Fairholme, Elgard, and Mark Guy. The short yard is people, Bushy, Jurison, and Lewis go out. Al Bruno, he was also coach of the year in the Canadian Football League. Him, sir. That was a few years ago, back in 1986. Al wasn't particularly pleased when he discovered that number 55, Larry Rohan, would be involved in tonight's game as the field judge. He was very critical of Rohan's work last year in the Grey Cup game. Elgard on the receiving end of that throw for a game of about six, and this Rough Rider team is really rolling. Moving the ball in the air. This time, Austin sees trouble coming from the, his left side. Halfback blessed by Stephen Jordan. He rolls to his right a little bit, makes a completion for eight yards. The Riders again doing a lot of shuffling, sending in that short yardage offense. Out of the game, Fairholme, Guy, and Elgard. Jurison goes in, Lewis goes in, and rookie Paul Bushy is in there as well. The fake to Milson Jones. Austin trying to get outside. He's going to be dropped for a loss. Sonny Gordon got to him back at the 50-yard line. By 18, Sonny Gordon. The big play was made in the secondary by number 12, Stephen Jordan. He picked up Paul Bushy, the rookie, coming out into the flat. Therefore, Austin had nowhere to throw it, and when he tried to scramble, 
Sonny Gordon coming from the backside, makes a tackle, and not only does he make a great defensive play, he takes him right out of field goal range. The first punt of his professional career for Mike Lezecki. He has replaced Terry Baker as the rider kicker. The riders are very pleased with his hang time. They're not as concerned with the distance. They are looking for hang time and accuracy, and they got great hang time on that kick. Brought down at the 25-yard line after a 28-yard kick. Thank you, guys and gals. The Hamilton Tiger Cats, after a big defensive play by Sonny Gordon in tracking down Kent Austin, forcing the Riders to punt, now take over at their own 25-yard line under the direction of Mike Kerrigan. Well, Mike Kerrigan throws the football. He is a pure passer. He's not a threat to run the football, so you don't worry about him. But at six foot four and a half or six five, he throws over the rush. And the defensive line for Saskatchewan is not overly tall. If you check him out, only Gary Lewis is over six one. Kerrigan with that short drop and rhythm throwing, he has, he'll get it over their heads. One thing the Rough Riders will attempt to do against Kerrigan is break his rhythm. They will show him a variety of coverages. They want to take him out of that three-step block. Well, that's his strength. He reads so fast, it's one, two, three, get rid of the ball. So they've got to break that rhythm and force him to hold it. First time the Ticats have the football. Kerrigan for Winfield over his head. It will be second and ten. And no surprise where Kerrigan goes. First play of the game, you got the rookie on the corner, and that's Stacey Hairston. Earl Winfield runs the pattern, an outstanding football player, special teams also. We said McAdoo and McCray may be the two rest running backs overall in the league. Rocky DiPietro in the scheme of the defense in Saskatchewan, a lot of zone. Look for Kerrigan to go to DiPietro. DiPietro, of course, the all-time pass reception leader in the CFL, 6.55 starting this season. Prevents Kerrigan from getting it away, dropping him for a loss back at the 18. And what we see, Don, is that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders lined up in that blitz look with Glenn Suter up on the line, and then they dropped out of it into a zone. Kerrigan went back and looked for Deep Pietro, and he was covered, and then watch what happens. Number 79, Gary Lewis is going to get there. You see him get to the inside on Merrill Harley, number 63, and with his size, he just engulfs the quarterback. Paul Osvaldiston stands back at his own four-yard line for this third down kick. Albert Brown takes it at the 50. And Brown gets to midfield before he's decked. And there's also a penalty flag on the play. Daniel Sellers was in to make the tackle. Albert Brown broke his leg and was unable to play in the Grey Cup game. He was replaced in that corner by Steve Wiggins in that championship final. But he is healthy and roaring and ready to go this year. Legal block. Saskatchewan number 68. First down. Greg McCormick was guilty of the illegal block, much to the chagrin of head coach John Gregory. Well, the penalty is first. Gregory yeah. made an interesting observation about rookies in a starting lineup. He said each rookie will cost you at least one game for a season. That's exactly right, too. Austin to Narcisse. Donald Narcisse on the receiving end of the throw up to the 47-yard line. That will be a gain of six yards, make it second and four. Hamilton wants to drop their defensive halfbacks to the wide, get wide to try to help out on the out. So what they do is they take Elgard up the field, and he screens the halfback, and then Narcisse catches the ball coming right back underneath it. There's really nobody there to help out. He'll make that catch every time. From the shotgun on second and four, Austin looking for Fairholm, incomplete. I don't think Fairholm was his initial target. No, he looked at his left first, but it gave Fairholm time to go down. And when Daryl Corbin ran out of the middle, he took the opportunity to throw it in. But what he didn't see was give Topolis from the weak side linebacker position. He's cruising in to take Corbin's spot. During training camp, Fairholm had indicated that he was going to retire. Many people found that rather strange simply a ploy to extract more money out of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the final analysis. Penalty flag as Lezecki's kick hangs high in the wind. Zatilny takes the ball and is stopped at the 47-yard line, but on the exchange of kicks, the Hamilton Tiger Cats have improved their field position with 8.45 remaining. One other game this opening night in the 1990 CFL season. Winnipeg at one point trailing 17-7 against Ottawa in the fourth quarter, now leading 21-17. Tomorrow night, 
Calgary is at British Columbia, and on Saturday, to complete this first week of play, Edmonton visits Toronto. A procedure call against Saskatchewan on that third down punt. The penalty declined by the Ticats. They'll have it first and ten at their own 47. Good field position to start. Wind at your back. That first drive got things going for Saskatchewan, but they couldn't finish it off. And now the Ticats have good field position in their favor. Kerrigan sends Winfield wide to the right, Wally Zatilny to the left. Hand off to McAdoo, and McAdoo has to really battle for the two yards that he gains. McAdoo had a great season last year. Tim McRae and him catch the football, return kicks, and run. And that's about all you can ask out of. He rushed for over 1,000 yards last year, had 11 touchdowns, outstanding football player, and he's the guy that'll do most of the running on the tight game. 5,000 yard rushers in the CFL last season. Reg Taylor of Edmonton, the leader, 1,503 yards. McRae was second, and McAdoo was fourth. Incomplete. Wally Zatilny appeared to be the target down the sidelines, or it may have been Rocky Di Pietro who slipped as he was attempting to make his cut. Zone defense, Kerrigan likes Di Pietro. He went down the field to run an out pattern out into the opening when the zone and the hole that was created, he slipped and fell, and the ball hit the ground harmlessly. But if that corner hadn't been running downfield, he might have been in great shape. But Rocky fell down. 7.57 remaining in the opening quarter. It's still scoreless here at Taylor Field. The second punt of the ball game by Osbaldiston, a good one. Jeff Treflin takes it at the 11-yard line. Treflin gets a couple of good blocks. Ernie Schremeyer brought him down but not before he got it back to the 52, a 37-yard return for Jeff Treplin. You know, Jeff Treplin's been around this league with a few different clubs out of McMaster University. He made this club because of being a jack-of-all-trades, a kick returner, a defensive back, and help out everywhere. And I'll tell you what, that's a big play, and he gets the ball right back to midfield for, Steve, for Austin to go to work. And many times it's that versatility that keeps players in the Canadian Football League. And Jeff Treplin is certainly a versatile individual. Last year, he even saw some action at a linebacking position. Well, they went through so many weak side linebackers last year with the injuries that he had to play it. And when you look at the, at the size of Jeff Treplin, it's hard to believe that he would be anywhere up where the action was. And he's an awful tough kid and proved his worth right there. Nelson Jones with a six-yard carry at second and four. Fake inside, throwing deep for Mark Guy, incomplete. Almost intercepted by the rookie corner, Wilkerson. Wilkerson has pretty good speed. He was running stride for stride with Guy. The Rough Riders had indicated that they would test Wilkerson with both Narcisse and Guy. Now, you won't find many people now playing the corner on the outside in Wilkerson's spot or Shields or Albert Brown that run over 4-6. You, you have to have the speed. He has the experience. He's had, been around a little bit, but it's his first year in the CFL, and he had excellent coverage on a fast receiver. Zeki again kicking into the wind, trying to angle it towards the sidelines. Zatilny takes it. He can't go anywhere. He's stopped back at the 18. 6.42, the time remaining in a still scoreless opening quarter. Scott? Well, Don, one of the biggest off-season acquisitions in the CFL, Notre Dame quarterback Tony Rice, who is on the sidelines charting plays tonight. And, Tony, it would appear as though he's not cracking the lineup yet. Oh, yeah, there's still a lot of things I have to learn, and um, each day I'm improving each and every day, but you never know what's, uh, what's going to come up. You know, I never know who's going to get injured. I might be in there. You never know. I'm just wishing Kent and um, Benny the best. Okay, best of luck. Hope to see you in the lineup soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Don? The acquisition of Tony Rice and the improved play of Jeff Ventram enabled the Riders to trade Tom Burgess to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as Ventram has moved into the number two position behind Ken Austin with Rice number three. That pass, Kerrigan to Winfield for a Hamilton first down at the third. Yeah, talking to Kerrigan before the game, he feels that their corners play off a little bit, that he can work to the outside. That to be Winfield and Satilny should get some work on out patterns down into the sideline. We'll see how it holds up. Winfield rejoins the Hamilton Tiger Cats in July last year. This is Kerrigan running for a gain of about eight. Sliding in front of linebacker Eddie Lowe at the 38-yard line. 
Uh, no, you watch Mike Kerrigan run with the football. He doesn't look like Tracy Ham. You know, Tracy ran for a thousand yards. This may be Mike's longest game, but the big thing, he got eight yards and then get down, don't take the hit. He's a very smart individual, very wise. Get down, don't don't take any punishment. There's no danger he's going to challenge Tracy Ham in rushing. <laughs> trying to get that first down and he should have it. It, is, it appears as though he's across the 40 yard line. Gary Lewis was there to make the tackle. Well, we talked about the loss of Jed Tommy, the big blocking back that, that left the Ticats and joined Ottawa this year. Sam Lauf, now the lead blocker, comes out on the lead block from Dan Rasevich, the linebacker, and Rasevich just flattened him. That's what he's got to do. Sam will learn, you know, takes a little bit, a little bit of time to get the experience to block. Now Bruno had to make a couple of changes to his assistant coaching contingent going into this season. And added to the roster were Joe Moss and Ben Zambiazzi replacing Frank North and Rich Stubler. Well, Coach Moss, you know, he's been in Canadian Football League with a couple teams and he's been around football for about 30 years. And he'll just bring a different style of game, which is what Al Bruno wanted. He said yesterday when he was talking to us, he wants his defense to bend but don't break. So we don't want to give up the big plays. Harrigan missed Winfield on first down. He goes to Winfield again too far. It's over his head, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats will be forced to punt again. They've tested the rookie, Stacy Harrison, on that corner. So far, he has responded, as has Wilkerson for the Tie Cats. Well, you know, they know they're going to get tested, and they got to go out and prove that they belong. And it, so far, both of them showed that they do belong. Kerrigan was off target again with that one. And the thing that I've noticed is Ted Heath, the defensive coach for the the Riders told us yesterday they want to mix the defenses up on Kerrigan, not let him, not give him a steady diet to where he knows what's coming. Albert Brown takes it at the 20 yard line. Good third down kick by Paul Osbaldiston, and this time good downfield coverage by the Ticats, restricting the return to two yards. In case you've forgotten, the Ticats had the best record in the East last year, finishing 10 points ahead of Toronto and Winnipeg, and they defeated Winnipeg in the Eastern Final to advance to the Grey Cup game. Saskatchewan in the West last year with a 9-9 record. They took their playoff act on the road, knocked off Calgary, and then scored the major upset against the 16-2 Edmonton Eskimos before going to the Grey Cup game and winning just their second Grey Cup championship in their 79-year history. Their previous win was back in 1966. Wally Zatilny receiving some repairs at the Ticat bench. His brother, Steve, is playing this year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, a rookie breaking into the Bomber lineup as a punt return specialist. Movement at the line of scrimmage that draws a penalty flag almost certainly offside against the Ticats. We saw the early movement by the Ticats, but sometimes they can be drawn offside by procedure. And with a prolonged discussion involving Ken Lazarek and the other members of the officiating staff, perhaps they're was a procedure call and that's exactly what it is. Riders trying to find out who moved. I think it was Ken Moore who may have moved on that offensive line. I think it was 62. That's First hand Stevenson. Stevenson. It's one of the tackles. I thought it was guy on this side, whoever that is. Austin throws it up there. Oh, that could have been intercepted as that ball floated. And Sonny Gordon is protesting that he was interfered with as he tried to get to that air ball. Well, what they did, they sent both backs in motion to the left side of the field. Austin rolls out, and then they slipped Tim McCray back for a screen all the way to the other side. They got pressure on Austin. He threw the ball in the air, and Gordon is right. He was going for the interception, and he was blocked. But the lineman thought for sure that, you know, Poli thought, hey, if he catches the ball, I got to block him. So he throws the block, no call. Second and 15, Saskatchewan. The Riders back at their own 23-yard line. 341 remaining in a still scoreless opening quarter. Here comes Darrell Patterson blitzing from his linebacking spot. That opened things up for Narcisse, and he'll be close to a first down. 
put all the strength away, three receivers to one side, send it back in motion. You get single coverage, Narcisse on Lance Shields. Excellent corner against a good receiver, and his receiver should win it. Look at the good, good protection, but look, no underneath help. He turns, Shields slipped and fell, he makes the catch. Gonna measure. Just short of a first down. Third and inches, and the Riders are going for it as Bushy, Jurison, and Lewis come into the ball game. That last play, Don, is about all you can ask for a quarterback. I mean, you have your best receiver one-on-one -on, -one on the defensive back. Go to him every chance you get. Last time, the Rough Riders gambled on third down. Quarterback Kent Austin kept the football. Full house backfield. Austin will keep again. He'll get the first down Kent as he Austin drives up to the 40-yard line. And not surprisingly, as he keeps that football, he goes to his left side behind the very experienced Roger. Today we have the visiting from all uh, 255 from, pounds and 15 years experience. Uh, he's seen everything there is to show. So he's going to go ahead and do it. Virginia de Lapre. She's in a French exchange. Student. First and ten, Saskatchewan, the Rough Riders at the 40-yard line. What a career this man has had. Roger Aldag is playing in his 219th, or 220th CFL game. 217 consecutive games. That's that's the amazing point to me. He's played 15 years, but when you can go for 217 straight games as an offensive lineman with the pounding that they take, that's that's phenomenal. And there's not another active player in the CFL with over 200 games. The all-time leader in games played, Ron Lancaster with 288. Not very many people want to play that many times. <laughs> not if they're normal. Well, we saw Daryl Corbin going off the field, the middle linebacker. He's had some tough luck last couple of years with an injury in each of the years where he'd be out four or five games. Walking off under his own power. Let's hope that it's nothing serious and he'll be back in. Now, a rule change this year. He must stay out for three plays. In the past, he could go out for one play and then come back into the lineup. This year, a new rule, a minimum three plays. Tim McRae. Takes the pass, close to the first down at the midfield stripe, brought down by Daryl Patterson. They get a first down now, but, but I'll tell you what, Daryl Patterson made a good play because with McCray's speed, if he gets outside, watch Austin, little play action. Now McCray's looking, and now he just sneaks out. Austin finds him. Look at the room outside. He cuts it back in. Patterson gets in on the hit. Down he goes, but good defense by Daryl Patterson. Peter Buchanan replacing Corbin at that middle linebacking position. And McCray carries the ball across midfield to the 53. They'll spot it actually at the 54 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Get the football in McCray's hands. He just runs straight ahead looking for a hole. Then he will use his ability to cut to the open area. Grover Covington coming from the backside. He makes the tackle. Tremendous all-purpose back. Tim McRae can do just about everything for you. This time, he has stopped well short of a first down. And looking at a third and two, it is a punting situation for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Gary Wilkerson came in to make the tackle. We talked about the coaching changes that Al Bruno made. John Gregory also made a coaching change. Larry Donovan, the former head coach of the BC Lions, is now an assistant coach standing right beside him, the man wearing the hat. He's running the special teams, and he's also working with the linebacker. They've been out here a few days, had the opportunity to talk to these coaches and watch Donovan in action. He really enjoys it here. He's telling me he's just having a ball. Well, it's been a rough night for the Hamilton linebacking contingent so far. Daryl Corbin hurt earlier on that last play. Daryl Patterson was helped off the field. It appeared as though he hurt his hand. Much better kick this time by Lezecki. Taken by Winfield. But look out. Don't give this man too much room. Tripped over the man who was out front blocking for him, Lance Shields. And then Dan Rashevich came over to knock him down. But Winfield made an excellent return just when it appeared he was trapped back at the 10-yard line. A run back of 18 yards. Well, I just watch him. It looks like he's got. I mean, he's in trouble right now. 
But all of a sudden, a tackle is missed, and he gets to the outside, and there's not many green jerseys over here. He picks up a good block right there to allow him to get outside, and when Winfield gets outside, he can make things happen. Lance Shield trying to get Milson Jones, and finally that causes Winfield to go down. But what a great receiver, but he's even a, special, a better special teams player. He has the distinction of scoring a touchdown in three different ways in a single game. A punt return, a kickoff return, and as a pass reception. Bob Poley, the injured Saskatchewan player. The Rough Riders in preseason encounters were winless. They lost their season opener in preseason activity in Saskatoon, 41-40 to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I lost it. They also lost to the Ottawa Rough Riders and to the Edmonton Eskimos. <laughs> Along that offensive line with Andy. Bob Pulley coming out. The Riders, well, he won't have to make a change as it appears that he will be able to come back into the ball game next time they have the football. See if we can find out what happened right there. The left of the screen, Pete Giftopoulos, number 90. He just leveled Bob Poley. You saw Poley walking off the field laughing. That's what you mean. Keep your head on a swivel, and he didn't he didn't get that head turned fast enough. You get blindsided. It takes a few seconds to get back to normal. 50 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Wally Zatilney has a first down at the 50. Wally Zatilney. Kerrigan bought, borrowed a page out of the book of Austin. Three receivers to one side. He gets a Tilney one-on-one with Albert Brown, and he beats him. Darrell Patterson in a great deal of pain, it appears, at that Hamilton bench. They're working on his hand. I'm all right, honey. I got revenge. Well, his wife looking in at their uh, off-season home in Winnipeg. As Darrell said, he's okay. Richard Estelle gets to the 45 of Saskatchewan. First and 10, Hamilton with 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. Watch the hole open up over the middle. Kerrigan with a little bit of a play action. Back to the middle of the field. Estelle will hook right to the right of the screen. You see Albright, 39. He comes right around him and into that big opening. Makes the catch and turns up field and runs. Quarterback just waited long enough for Estelle to clear Albright and then he hits him. This will be the last play of the quarter. Lee Knight comes into the ball game to replace Richard Estelle. It's been a lot of movement of the football for a quarter in which not a single point has been scored. It started out like Saskatchewan was going to have no problem moving down the field, and then since then, the ball's moved between the 20s, but no one's putting it into the end zone for any points. Final play of the opening quarter, a penalty flag. It would appear that a time count violation will go against the Ticats. The man who called it is not one of Al Bruno's favorite officials. No, I don't think so. <laughs> We're going to get a time count violation. I would imagine you say last play of the quarter. First down. I look for Kerrigan with the wind at his back. Let's see how far he can throw. Put Winfield and Satilney out and just let him run. Let's see what happens. draws the interference call trying to defend against Winfield in the vicinity of the 15-yard line. It appeared for a moment as though Winfield, despite the interference, was going to make the catch. Almost made the catch. I, I guess you can Ford call interference, interference on it. But Saskatchewan number two, first down Hamilton. Well, that's tough. Hairston turned. He got his head turned trying to play the football. That's a tough, tough call to make. But anyway, they get another down, and Kerrigan's now in position to throw in the end zone. Quarter cannot end on a penalty call, so as a result, the Thai Cats get one more play with time expired in this opening quarter. Winfield again, incomplete. Same play. Exactly. You get that defensive back, like Hairston up inside, just try to loft it over at head, let him run and get it. 
So after 15 minutes of play, it's still scoreless. In that opening quarter, Saskatchewan had the edge of net yards, most of Hamilton's yardage coming in the final seconds of the quarter. McAdoo, the intended receiver, he was bumped several times running his pattern by linebacker David Albright. He protests to the official that there should have been a penalty call, but there was no flag. I did like the interference call before. I thought it was questionable, and I don't think there's any doubt about this. Watch McAdoo upfield. The ball's going to be thrown. Albright right here just knocks him away. That is interference, and I, and I don't blame McAdoo for being upset. He's a little bit upset, and he should be. Oh. Paul Osbaldiston, who established a league record for scoring in 1989, will attempt to provide the Ticats with their first points of the 1990 season and break this scoreless deadlock. And he's successful. 33 seconds into the second quarter. A 23-yard field goal by Paul Osbaldiston for a 3-0 Hamilton Ticat lead. This game certainly in contrast to the wild scoring Grey Cup game between these two teams. And the weather is certainly in contrast to what we experienced in Taylor Field when they met last year on July the 28th. Hamilton won 34-17. Mike Kerrigan, when we talked with him prior to the game, alluded to the tremendous downpour, the electrical storm that hit this area partway through the second quarter. Well, he had the first year he was out here as a starter. They had played in the rain, but it was nothing like last year's storm. He said he's hoping this year for nice weather. Well, he got it because he can't ask for a better night than this to play. Word from the Hamilton bench is that Daryl Patterson dislocated a finger, but he will be returning to the ball game. It was interesting last year that three people broke the one season record for points in the Canadian Football League. And Albert Brown on the kickoff return. Paul Osbaldiston was the leader with his 233 points. Jerry Carrick of Edmonton had 224, and David Ridgway of Saskatchewan had 216. Seven of 11, first quarter for Austin. He started out hot. Seven of is not bad at the best of times. So now I'll see if he can get him moving down the field. First and 10, Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders at their own 37-yard line. Guard in motion from that slot back position over the middle. The pass complete to Fairholm. A gain of eight. Daryl Corbin, who was injured earlier in the first quarter, back at that middle linebacking position to make the tackle. You saw Daryl Corbin going to his right. Jeff Fairholm let Tim McCray go by, then he snuck right in underneath him, right into the area that Corbin vacated. And that's all Austin wanted. He got eight yards. Second and two, Saskatchewan. The Riders at their own 45. Nelson Jones. His forward progress carried very close to the 47-yard line before he was driven back. Grover Covington involved in that stop. I wonder how much he is going to miss Mike Walker playing beside him at that tackle position this year. Well, they played together for so many years, you know. They knew one another's moves, and, you know, there's no substitute for experience, especially when they're side by side. And, I know talking to Grover, yeah, he's going to miss him, and he's got Ronnie Glanton out there now, and Glanton says sometimes he calls him Mike. <laughs> so I guess he misses him. And it was Mike Walker who nicknamed Ronnie Glanton the Raging Bull. He had a big playoff game against Winnipeg with three quarterback sacks. Boy, he sure did. 5'10", 250 pounds. He's just a straight-ahead, quick type of rusher. Measurement revealed the first down. Now Austin looks for more on the sidelines. Narcisse, the target, over his head. Seems like both quarterbacks tonight, when they've thrown the ball to the sideline on the right, with the wind coming across the field, the ball has sailed out of bounds. No one's thrown a good pass out there yet. Watch him turn Lance Shields around. He comes upfield. Look at Lance. Takes that extra step. Now he can't get back. That's a good pattern, boy. I tell you, you get that much separation, you hurt. if you're the receiver, you say, oh, we can't miss this one. There were 9,000-yard receivers in the CFL last year, Narcisse being one of them. 81 receptions for 1,419 yards. And another first down for Donald Narcisse at the 50-yard line of Hamilton. 
Well, he turned him around on one play. He says, let's go back on second and ten, see if we can get it. Just come downfield on Lance Shields, break to the sideline. Here he comes. Try to get him headed up. Speed turn outside. You don't see Lance Shields in the picture. Good throw, good catch, first down. 12.40 remaining in the second quarter. 3-0, the Ticats lead. First and ten, Saskatchewan from the 50. Fairhall was the intended receiver. Good coverage by Jordan. Stephen Jordan last year's rookie of the year in the CFL. Good coverage on Fairhall. See the ball thrown just a little bit far. Fairhall can't get it. Just good coverage. That's all that is. Second and ten from the 50. the catch for another Saskatchewan first down. He stopped at the 37. Austin sprints away from the back. The backs go to the right. He comes to the left. Guy just goes down, turns in, and again, Wilkerson slipped and fell, and it allowed Guy to get wide open. Another catch, another first down. First and 10, Saskatchewan. They are at the Hamilton 36-yard line. Three receivers go to the right this time. Austin looks that way, then quickly dumps it off in the play, but he couldn't hang on as he was hit by Darrell Corbin, the middle linebacker, at the same instant the football arrived. Well, that's about all a linebacker can do. You know, he's he's got to stay there in case they run the football. And on the snap, he takes off to his coverage. He's very seldom ever going to get his hands on the ball when it's thrown that quick. So he has to hope that the hit will cause the drop. What read does the quarterback make on that play? The outside linebacker. If that outside linebacker comes hard on a blitz, you try to hit that back with the ball. The only guy that can get there is Corbin. So all you can hope for is what Corbin did. And that's to hit him to cause him to drop it. Saskatchewan from the shotgun formation. Austin throwing for Narcisse. He can't hang on. Lance Shields may have just deflected that ball as it was arriving in the hands of Donald Narcisse. If he didn't touch it, he just got his distraction in front of his eyes because watch how open he is. He hooks, then he turns to the outside. The ball's thrown pretty well. Here comes Shields. He did get just a piece of it. It's a good thing because he gambled. If you gamble and lose, Narcisse scores. He, this time he gambles and wins. David Ridgway, who during the winter months has talked about the kick. We'll try one from 43 yards out. And it is good. So a 1052 remaining in the half. Riders and Tie Cats are all even at three. After trailing by 10 in the third quarter, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have scored 17 unanswered points. They now lead the Ottawa Rough Riders 24-17 in the other season opener taking place tonight at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. Well, you got to get things started. And I know everybody's anticipating to see just how the Ottawa Rough Riders are going to do. They caused a lot of commotion in the offseason. Everybody's hoping it works out well for them right now. They need to get the offense in gear. Williams needs to catch a pass or something. Two kickers, Ridgeway and Osbaldiston, have accounted for the only points in this ball game. Both field goals in this second quarter after a scoreless opening 15 minutes here at Taylor Field in Regina. And wherever you're looking in tonight on the CBC Television Network, we hope you're enjoying our CFL coverage of this first game of 1990. McAdoo is up to the 39-yard line. That will be a gain of four. They opted to scrimmage from the 35 rather than have Saskatchewan kick off after that field goal. Middle linebacker can't go anywhere until the quarterback passes up the remaining back in the backfield. You hand the ball off on the draw to McAdoo, Albright has to react back up, which he does. Albright led the Rough Riders in tackles last year. He was in in that stop. Hamilton second and five. Zatilny was the intended receiver. It draws a penalty flag as Rashevich and Stacey Hairston were both there with him. I think it's going to be Harrison because Zatilny goes down, slants to the inside. He bump. gets past Rasevich, and then Stacy knows. He's shaking his head. He fell on him early, and the flag Four come down. Four interference. Saskatchewan number two. First down, Hamilton.
First and 10, Hamilton, Hamilton. The ball is at the Saskatchewan 54-yard line, 9.58 remaining in the second quarter. The score tied at three. Richard Estelle will have another Hamilton first down as he battle, battles his way to the 43 and a half of Saskatchewan. You see Kerry and Taco to Di Pietro going back to the huddle. What Di Pietro is telling him is that they had a halfback blitz and Di Pietro saw it. So if you if you get in trouble, give it to him. Second quarter last year was the most productive for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And Mike Kerrigan will attempt to make it happen again this year, but when he can't get away from a blitzing halfback like Richie Hall. He won't get time to throw. No chance. That's a little bit of a play-action pass, and there's nobody to block the halfback. No one. And watch Richie Hall come, number seven. There's the fake. Lewis is chasing him, but Richie Hall is in there before Carrick can get set. That must be very unsettling for a quarterback when you're trying to drop back and you look and you see that halfback right in your face. Especially when you're going toward him. You know, if you're going straight back, he has a little bit further to come, but when you're going toward him and he's coming on a full-out blitz, you're in trouble. Second and 19, Hamilton. Penalty flag on the play. Incomplete as the Tilney was the target. It appeared as though Di Pietro may have been in motion. And then a roughing the passer call is assessed after Kerrigan threw the ball. Procedure Hamilton. Roughing the passer, Saskatchewan. They were looking at second and 19, so the 10 yard penalty should be applied. Legal procedure, Hamilton. Roughing the passer, 99 Saskatchewan. First and 10, Hamilton. Major foul, get your automatic first down. Number 99, Chuck Twingbill. A little bit too late. Ah, uh, well, okay. <laughs> I don't like that. It appeared as though he was trying to hold back. Right. So it is a first down, Hamilton. The ball is at the 43. 8.26 remaining in the half. McAdoo bounces off the first tackle and gets another Hamilton first down. And that's what he does, too. He really bounces off. He hits, he hits in. Eddie Lowe, I believe, and Gary Lewis were both there, and he just somehow bounces off. What's to the right? Here comes Eddie Lowe. Good hit by Gary Lewis. All he does is great balance by McAdoo, and now he's outside running with the football, and Larry Hogue has to get him. First and 10, Hamilton. They are at the Saskatchewan 27. Swing pass to McAdoo. The Riders were ready for it. Larry Hogue read that one perfectly. And holds the play for no game. They're now in overtime in Ottawa. Winnipeg and Ottawa tied at 24. The halftime will have highlights of that season opener in the nation's capital. Start of the Maybe season. We'll the going into overtime. Know. Pretty good football game. Winnipeg 24, Ottawa the last 24. Last play. Saskatchewan must have been in the backfield. They had to be in there. I mean, they knew it was coming. They were right there when the ball was thrown. Second and ten. Kerrigan for Zatilne, incomplete. Albert Brown was defending against Wally Zatilne, and it will be third and ten. You see Wally talking to the official back there. As he goes in, he goes down the field, and he breaks toward the post to the inside, and he comes back out when he was going in. Just grab his jersey and hold on a little bit. But the referee can't see it. That's good defense. Well, he's got a contingent of fans here at Taylor Field. 19 Zatilnis, none of them related from the Saskatchewan area, at the game tonight, all wearing Zatilni Hamilton Tiger Cat jerseys. I know he's a very outward going guy. I didn't know he's out here getting he had that many fans here already. 35-yard field goal by Paul Osbaldiston puts the Ticats in front with 6.46 left in the half. Capacity at Taylor Field is about 28,000, and there are very few empty seats tonight. Crowd probably in excess of 25,000 watching this season opener at Taylor Field. And so far, it's been a kicking duel between Paul Osbaldiston and David Ridgway. 
Osvaldiston has both made both of his field goal attempts. Ridgeway has been good on his only drive for a three-pointer. And it's a 6-3 ball game with 6.46 remaining in the half. the signal from Ken Lazarek. Two and out, Alapate is the ball carrier. He's the designated import for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He is playing so far only on special teams. And the Riders didn't anticipate that the kick would go to him, but he did a pretty fair job of returning at 15 yards. He got a good field position out to the 50-yard line. I thought he may stop and lateral back to one of the returners, but uh, those guys, big guys, get their hands on the ball. They've always wanted to run with it. They're not going to give it to anybody. Narcisse goes wide to the right. Guy comes out left. Austin throws for Narcisse. He can't hang on. He took a big hit from Lance Shields. It was thrown about as well as you can throw it. Just as Narcisse broke into the hole, uh, Austin let it go, but he didn't catch it clean. Watch the ball hit him. It hits his hands, and then it's just as it goes through his hands to his shoulder pads, bang, Shields hits him, and it's going to bounce out of there every time. That's why you tell receivers, catch it in the hands. Don't let it get to the pads. Second and 10, Saskatchewan from the 48-yard line. Austin goes to the sidelines. Mark Guy has a first down to the 44 of Hamilton. He put a good move on the rookie Gary Wilkerson to get into the clear. A good job. He knows he needs 10 yards. He goes 18 yards downfield. Then he stops and comes back to the sideline. That gives Austin a good target to throw at. He just leads him back, catches it, makes the first down. Well run pattern by Mark Guy. They spot the ball at the 44. First and 10, Saskatchewan. Hand off to Tim McRae. He'll only get a couple of yards. Apart from the one run by McAdoo, Neither side has been able to move the football along the ground. Well, that's what I noticed in the first quarter statistics. It didn't look like it's going to be a running game. I know Ken Austin and I know Mike Kerrigan. It's not going to be a running game if they have their way, because they both love to throw the football, and they both throw it extremely well. Gain of three, it's second and seven. That one was deflected. Jim Rockford almost picked it off as Narcisse was the target. Rockford coming over from that safety position, dove for the football. And you see him come into the hole. Here it is. But what somebody in front, a linebacker, is going to jump and deflect it. All Narcisse can do is tip it, but a good effort by Rockford to try to catch that football. That's why you get those arms up. Force that quarterback to throw between you. If he has to throw it over, that's what will happen. This will be a 48-yard field goal attempt by Dave Ridgeway. Movement at the line of scrimmage. That draws penalty flags. Blanton made the contact. Now, is it offside or procedure? Was 15 yards. And it's unnecessary roughness. Third down. 32 about. Offside, Hamilton number 62, third down the field. So it's third and two now for Saskatchewan. John Gregory complaining that it should have been unnecessary roughness with the forearm that Gladden threw. No, I don't disagree with it. You know, if he jumped outside, he should stop. It's now a 43-yard field goal try by Ridgeway. And it is good. So twice, David Ridgeway has split the uprights for 43 yards out. The game is tough. And there, Bob Morrow has made the trip to Regina for the home opener of the Rough Riders to honor a bet that he made with his Regina counterpart, Doug Archer, prior to the Grey Cup game. And, uh, Bob, they're not rubbing it in here at all, are they? No, except everything is green. The sheets on my bed last night, the towels, you name it, everything was green. But it's an uh, honor you bet, as you say. It's great to be here, and it's all part of the CFL in Canada. And, Doug, it's nice to see you're being such a gracious host. Well, it's uh, easy to be a gracious host when you come out on top. But, uh, really, we want to see the uh, CFL prosper, and there's a friendly rivalry rivalry between these two teams. Oh, come on, you're loving this. You're loving this. Well, I'm I'm a Rough Rider fan, but uh, I'm also a fan of football, and I think the uh, 
contest like we had last year was good for uh, the, the CFL as a whole. Okay, well, Bob, when you led 3-0, I could have swore you had an insurmountable lead, but thank you both. All right, we'll see you later. All right, take care, John. First and 10 for Hamilton from the 35-yard line with 4-14 remaining in the half. McAdoo has stopped at the 40-yard line, a gain of five. Dan Rashevich was over covering as McAdoo came up in the backfield. Good for five. Second and five, Hamilton. Both teams like to employ their running back in their passing attack. Yeah, you've got to get the hand, the ball in the hand of people like McAdoo and McCray. Whether it's running or throwing, get them the football. Rocky Di Pietro, a target as he went deep. There's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Look! It appears to be a holding call against Hamilton. Holding. Hamilton, number 68, decline. Third down. Penalty against Mike Dirks is declined. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, by declining the penalty, forced the Ticats to kick with 3.36 remaining in the half. Good job. Good job. Treflin and Albert Brown back to receive. Treflin will take it at the 39, and he's hit immediately, but a no-yards call will be assessed against Dan Sellers. 31-yard kick that time by Osvaldiston kicking into that win. Treflin had no opportunity to return it as Sellers was right on top of him. Pretty good kick, though. Drive it hard into the wind, and it's like that golf shot, Don. He gets up there and just hangs and floats. And... Not my golf shot. Well, mine, I'd say mine, but it went straight, so I know it wasn't mine. No yards. Hamilton number 37. First down to Saskatchewan. The no yards call moves the ball close to the midfield strike with 3.20 remaining in the half. First down, Saskatchewan. Neither team has been able to put it in the end zone thus far. Tim McRae will get a first down or be very close to it depending on where they spot it over on the sidelines. He's going to be a yard short, I guess, as the official rules that he stepped out at the 46. Uh, we talk about Roger all day, 15 years in the league. Let's watch him. Ronnie Glenn taking Mike Walker's spot. Good job. Just he keeps him away from the quarterback. Get the straw solid. Very few times you're going to run over an all day. Glenn is not big enough. I don't know if anybody is. Roger's down there. He's a very powerful individual. Does a good job protecting the quarterback. Second and one. Get off. And Austin keeps for a first down. It will be first and ten, Saskatchewan from the Hamilton 45-yard line with 2.53. Half from Taylor Field tonight. We'll see how being involved in what many have called the greatest game ever played, the Grey Cup of last November, has affected many of those involved in tonight's game. General manager of the Grey Cup champions, Alan Ford, will join us live and we'll have highlights of the Ottawa-Winnipeg season opener, Don. And this season opener is tied at six. Jones. Milson Jones picks up two yards before being stopped by Grover Covington. Well, that's a good stop by Covington. He's to this side of the field, wide side. They hand the ball off to McCray. He tries to cut to the back side of it, and Covington, at his age, you know, everybody says he's getting old. He still showed pretty good quickness to come from the behind and make the tackle on a guy like McCray. Second and eight, Saskatchewan, as the Riders operate from the shotgun. Austin is forced to step up, throw, completes the pass to Phil Catch him in his own defense. They had pressure on Austin. All right, let's watch it. Watch the linebacker to your left. He'll drop back. You see Rockford dropping back. Here comes the pressure. Step inside. Now, the receiver has to go to an open spot. Fairholm finds it. Austin finds him. First down. 214 left in the half. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 30. Donald Narcisse has another first down, taking it out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Going to work on Land Shields. They've been a... If you think about the patterns they've been running at him, he goes down the field and turns to the inside the last three times. Now he goes down, bangs, turns right to the sideline. Excellent throw over top of Elgard and into the hands of Narcisse for the first down. Five 
interceptions tonight for Donald Narcisse. First and ten from the 17. The fake pitch. The pass to Fairholm incomplete. Stephen Jordan was defending against the Saskatchewan slotback. So far in the Saskatchewan passing attack, they have not gone to Ray Elgar. No, they haven't. This time it's a, a Austin fakes play action, gets that safety going, gives Fairholm time to get inside of his defensive back, Stephen Jordan, but the ball's just a little bit too far for him to dive out and catch it. Second and 10, Saskatchewan at the 17. the shotgun again. Austin under pressure, looking to the end zone for Farrell. There's a penalty flag. It was called against Wilkerson on Mark Guy. Almost certainly pass interference in the end zone. not be quite as simple as we first thought. However, there was a rather detailed explanation, and it is against Wilkerson in the end zone. I don't know about this one. The ball was thrown to Fairholm. Four times in the Ferris. Final two in the two. First down for Scouts. That puts it on the one yard line, too. That's a big, tough penalty to take. They said Hamilton number two. There's no number two in that Hamilton secondary. It's number 20. Wilkerson penalty flags again as Nelson Jones carries into the end zone. The touchdown will stand. Offside, it would appear, against Hamilton. Offside. the benefit of a pass interference call, Milson Jones from the one, barges into the end zone. That's a good job on Daryl Corbin by the lead back, and you see Paul Bushy blocking out on the outside man, creates the scene for Milson Jones, he just walks in, standing up. The first touchdown of the ball game, and David Ridgway will add the point after, and with 151 remaining in the half, it's now 13-6, Saskatchewan ahead of Hamilton. Well, it's been a pretty good defensive struggle keeping teams out of the end zone, but the interference call in the end zone, I, I questioned it. I didn't like it, and it puts the ball down close, and, you know, the team takes advantage of a break, and Saskatchewan puts it in the end zone and gets the seven points. The Saskatchewan coaches were telling us yesterday, Ron, that Milson Jones has to be employed more this year as a ball carrier, not just in short yardage situations, to take some of the pressure off Tim McRae. Not only the pressure, Don, but what it does, it keeps the other team some keys constantly on Tim McRae. If they know he's, that Milson Jones is never going to carry the football, then you forget about him and you concentrate on stopping McRae. If you mix it up a little bit, you've got two threats and teams can't beat up. That's the whole secret of football. Why they want to get him involved. Could be that that penalty call and the interference call did not take place in the end zone, although the flag was thrown in the end zone. It must have taken place at the two yard line because that's where they scrimmaged the ball. McAdoo on this kick return. Is he going to go all the way? Albert Brown is after him and will catch him, but not before he gets to the 17. You know, we talked about Tim McRae and, Bob and Derek McAdoo on what they do for a football club. That's about as fine a run and an individual effort that you're going to see out of anybody. An outstanding run. They got him through the first. Watch it. They'll do the blocking for him here. They get him upfield. Now he's on his own, and he starts cutting back 82 yards. But watch this. He's hit. This is the hard thing to do is stop and start in traffic and then swing outside. You should be getting tired. He went 82 yards before Albert Brown was able to run him down. That's just how it is. Now this game is beginning to resemble the Grey Cup game. Yeah, I like this better. From the 17, first and 10, Kerrigan can't get it away. Bobby Jerison will be credited with the sack. Recovery sack. That's the sack by the secondary. They had excellent coverage on the receivers. 
nowhere to throw the football, eventually you're going to get in trouble. Watch how much time he's got. I mean, he had time to throw this football. Finally coming inside of, of Dirk. Bobby Jerson tied last year in the leader in sacks. I think he was 17 or 16. Second and 17. Second and 17, Hamilton with 113 remaining in the half. Carrigan throws for Zatilni. Touchdown. And Carrigan, rather than spike the ball in the end zone to celebrate, punts the football back towards the line of scrimmage. <laughs> well, the surprising thing is, we run the pattern on Albert Brown, but Larry Hogue was sitting back there to double cover on Wally Zatilni, and Carrigan threw it in the hole. Watch it. They drop out of there. It's a man-to-man -man defense with it held deep. Watch where the ball is thrown. Larry Hogue, number three, doesn't get over there. Albert Brown had good coverage, but the ball was thrown perfectly for Wally Zatelli. So Paul Osbaldiston will try and put the Ticats back into a 13-13 tie, and he succeeds as Wally Zatelli accepts congratulations. one of the characters on this Hamilton Tiger Cat team. Keeps the rest of the players very loose in that dressing room. A very outgoing individual. Very outgoing. But again, watch where the ball is thrown. Just perfect. Albert Brown can't reach it while he's until he gets a touchdown. Gary Lewis a little upset that he didn't get to the quarterback as Kerrigan celebrates the successful touchdown throw to Wally Zatilny. Two plays, 17 yards for the major score after that big 82-yard kickoff return by Derek McAdoo. Boy, that was an outstanding run that McAdoo made. Wow. Stacy Hairston on the kickoff return. And he can't get away from Darrell Patterson. Hairston. One minute is the time remaining in the first half with the score tied at 13. All the points have been scored in the second quarter. A lot of time with a minute for a quarterback like Austin. A minute's an eternity. They work on this a lot. Watch them work on it in practice the last couple of days. He can move the football up and down that field in that hurry up offense, two minute drill, whatever you want to call it. But he can execute it. And he'll try from the shotgun formation. To the sidelines for Mark Guy. It's intercepted by Wilkerson. He might score if he can get away from Austin. He does. And the rookie beats the man on the sidelines. A 52-yard interception return as Wilkerson, who had been playing off Mark Guy that time, stepped in front of him and returned at 52 yards for the major score. Yeah, we talk about Wilkerson being one of the defensive keys that they would work on him. Sure, you go after him, but the thing is, Wilkinson played enough football to know that you try to throw the ball to the sidelines and stop the clock in a two-minute drill. He steps in front of Mark Guy. Austin had no chance to catch him. He knew he was going in. That's just a good defensive play by rookie Gary Wilkinson. Well, we didn't get the ball into the end zone for almost 28 minutes of this football game, and very quickly we have three touchdowns. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats will take a 20 to 13 lead with 50 seconds remaining in the half. Oh, we got time for another touchdown. Yeah, 50 seconds, long time. Get a good kick return, get it out around midfield, and then go back to work. And don't don't worry about things. Just go throw the ball. Watch it. Good timing. Watch the timing. Perfect. Steps right in front of him and gets it. Picks up a good block and then he's gone. Well, it took time to get things going, but now this game is taking on some similarities to the Grey Cup game of last year, where each time the team touched the football, they seemed to score, and the team that had it last emerged as the winner. That's what happened. Austin on the sideline. Can't worry about it. You know, you've got to move the football in the minute you're going to throw it. You hope that they intercept it, they don't run for a touchdown, but he's got to come out throwing again. Squib kick. Stacy Harrison again on the return, looking for some blocking help. He's caught from behind. Good play by Daryl Corbin. Bring Harrison up the field, starting toward the middle to draw that 
cover his team in and then try to get him outside. But both times he's tried to go out, he's been tackled from behind. That was a good defensive play by Darrell Corbin. 45 seconds remaining. Still, as Ron said earlier, a lot of time for Austin to move the team downfield. He's got time. He's got to keep throwing. And again, he'll operate from that shotgun formation over the middle for James Ellingson to the 50 out of Hamilton. 40 seconds remain. Sent fair home up the field. Leak Tim McCray. Sneak him out under the linebacker. The linebacker sees McCray coming and steps up, and they throw it in right behind him. That's, his, that's the way you do it. You're dealing with people, and when they stop, you go behind them. Good throw. 24-yard gain. First and 10, Saskatchewan at the 50 of Hamilton. Now the clock starts. Austin drills it to Narcisse. First down at the 24, 26-yard line. Tim McRae goes out into the flat. When he goes out there, Sonny Gordon takes him out into the flat that opens a hole right behind him. Austin throws it right into hole to Narcisse. That play used up just eight seconds. First and 10, Saskatchewan. Narcisse lined up and ready to roll. He has had a big first half. Seven receptions thus far. Austin to Algard, his first catch of the ball game. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And there's a penalty flag for unnecessary roughness out of bounds. And there's also an injured Hamilton tie cap. Tim Lorenz is down. Player down in Hamilton, 64. We point out the rule change this year when a player goes out because of an injury he must remain on the sidelines Major fall for three plays. Unnecessary roughness 38 Hamilton. First down Saskatchewan. I like that ball. ball. I like that ball. He Elgard made the catch spun to the outside. Watch him. He's going to catch it. Now he knows get out of bounds. Okay Lance Shields has got it. He is out of bounds right now. You don't come and hit a guy when he's off the field to play. That's an excellent call. And, Puts it half the distance, and with 22 seconds in the first down, they got three shots at the end zone. Tim Lorenz goes out. Coming into the ball game, Mark Napierkowski. Twenty-two seconds remaining in the half. First and goal, Saskatchewan. Home could not hang on as he was working against the safety, Jim Rockford, who played it well. Uh, what they do is they send Tim McCray in motion way out to the sideline, hoping to get Jim Rockford to move over to the three receiver side. And he hung back in there, and when Fairholme came up the scene, Rockford went a long way to get into it. Fairholme comes out of the ball game. James Ellingson goes in. See, there's the, he's open right there, but watch who's coming, number six. That's what he's back there for. Get to the football, free safety. 17 seconds remain, second and goal. Into the end zone, incomplete. Uh, appeared to be a bit of a mix up there. James Ellingson simply ran into the defender, Wilkerson. Ellingson went down the field. He was going to go deep, and Mark Guy came underneath. So when Wilkerson stopped to try to come back to cover Mark Guy, they had a collision and went down. And I really don't think it's anybody's fault. It just happens. Austin didn't agree. Looking at it from up here, I have to look at it now. So David Ridgway will attempt a field goal of 16 yards after hitting on two previous tries from 43 yards out. And he is successful on his third field goal attempt of the night. And it's now a 20 to 16 game with nine seconds remaining in the half. Well, I don't know. I mean, we may have time for another field goal. <laughs> you always, as long as there's time up there, you have a chance to score. Look, well, he had his space. He, he's allowed to be there. He didn't interfere with him catching the ball. He was there. It's a good call, I think, by the officials. Uh, well, what he's telling him is a defender is entitled to the space that he is occupying. If you run into him, that's your problem. And that's what he's telling him. He's, he's in his place. He didn't interfere with the ball. I never convinced John Gregory that that was the correct call, but it will stand. And now the Ticats are quite content to run out the clock to end the first half. Seven seconds remain. The clock now starts. Final score is Winnipeg 31, Ottawa 26. Enable the... 
Hamilton Ticats to take those final seconds off the clock and go to the dressing room with a four-point lead. So after 30 minutes of this Grey Cup replay, it's Hamilton 20, Saskatchewan 16. Last couple minutes and a half, you know they want to catch it and get out of bounds, but look at the excellent timing that Wilkerson makes on the throw by Ken Austin. And normally when you pick it off on the sidelines, you're home free, and he takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. Now that gets him instant respect. So the Hamilton Tiger Cats lead 20 to 16 at halftime here at Taylor Field in Regina in the season opener between the Grey Cup finalists of 1989. We'll be back after this. Some Tiger Cats leading by four, preparing to kick off to start the second half. In case you're wondering, the Grey Cup game was a 27-22 score at halftime. Ray Elgar on the kickoff return. I don't know whether Osbaldiston was attempting to screw that one or whether he just missed kicked him. Kent Austin in the first half completed 17 of 31, but the one pass he would like to have back is the one that Wilkerson returned for the touchdown. Oh, oh, that's tough. They put it up 31 times in one half of football. An awful lot of throwing. You'll be up around 50 for this ball game. Though. Draw play with Milson Jones. Ball carrier with Milson Jones. A gain of about six yards. Peter Giftopoulos was in on the stop. Nelson Jones, an excellent blocker. And as a ball carrier, he seems to get better when he receives more work. Most running backs are like that. And four. The longer the game goes, the more work they get, the better they become. This time, Tim McRae has McCray his number called and should be close to a first down. Stop made by 64, Tim Lorenz. Tim Lorenz, from his defensive tackle position, was in there to make the stop. The signal from Kent Austin to John Gregory indicates that they are a little short of a first down. But they are going to go after it on third down. Gary Lewis comes in. Bobby Jurison comes in. And Bushy comes in. Bushy, the rookie, the fifth round draft choice of the Rough Riders. A handoff to Milson Jones, and he barges through to the 45. Statistically, with a 20 to 16 lead, the Hamilton Tiger Cats were well behind in total yardage. Just 89 yards compared to 234 for Saskatchewan, but they lead by four points. Mainly on the strength of that 52-yard interception return. And a great kickoff return oh! by McAdoo. Elgar is inside the 40. The Riders have moved the ball, but the Ticats have got the two touchdowns. Sneaky the way they're doing it. They bring those receivers up the field about six or seven yards. They're welcome slide Elgard underneath. They hit him real quick with the ball, and then Fairholm's there to block the middle linebacker. You have McCray there to block the outside linebacker, hoping to get Elgard free with the football in his hand. Second and three. Austin underneath to McCray, and McCray is the first down inside the 25. Receiver coming out of the backfield. They just sneak out, turn inside, and he slips and falls, then he gets up. Watch him. You can just see him going to the right of the screen. He'll come into your picture on the right side. He got up off the ground, made the catch, and then this is what he does best. He runs north and south, which means he heads for the goal line with the ball in his hand. First and 10, Saskatchewan. They spot the ball at the 25. Austin throwing deep for Elgar. He's got it. to the football by Ray Elgard. He appeared to be turned the wrong way. 
He started down, went to the flag, which means he looks over his right shoulder. Austin threw the ball over his left shoulder, and he will turn completely around to catch the ball. That is a good move. Watch him. See, he's looking to his right, turns around, and there it is. Adjusting to the ball in the air. Excellent eye-hand coordination to locate the football in the air, but then be able to catch it. For the first time, the Rough Riders have the lead. The point after by David Ridgway, and it's now 23-20. A 25-yard touchdown pass to Ray Elgar. Gentlemen took part in the recreation obstacle race held during the pre Three receivers in the wide side of the field. You see Wilson Jones in tight. There's Elgar goes upfield. Watch the ball in the air and watch the adjustment. There he turns. Locates it, catches it before Lance Shields can get there. That's just an excellent play. And Austin's a little bit happy, which he should be because, you know, you gamble sometimes with a throw, and that's a little bit of a gamble, but Elgar made it pay off. And that's a lot of confidence in a receiver by a quarterback. That's a difficult play for a receiver to be turned one way, turn the other way, and relocate the football. Yeah, when something's in the air and you look one way, turn and try to find it. He found it very quickly and then put his arms out and caught it. That's the hard part. Derek McAdoo gives to Winfield on the reverse on this kickoff return. Winfield was forced by Richie Hall, and that may have saved a big, big return as Richie Hall didn't catch Winfield, but he did force him wide. Well, I'll tell you what made it go. They fooled everybody, but a tremendous block by Junior Robinson. Holy cow. You know, when they hand that ball off to Winfield and he starts back, you need somebody. Watch to the right of your screen. I don't know if we'll see it, but it is one heck of a block coming. Right there. Junior Rob just dropped him, and Richie Hall does the work. He forces him wide enough to get him out of bounds. McAdoo struggling inside for a pickup of just a couple of yards. That was a 28-yard return on the reverse. McAdoo giving to Winfield. Kerrigan, less than 50% completions in that opening half. Just 80 yards for the Hamilton quarterback. You can see he loves to throw the football. Now, Austin put it up 31 times. He put it up 15. That tells you who's controlling the game. Second down, Hamilton. Controlling the ball offensively. to kick with 10.47 left in the third quarter. When you think about the Hamilton, when you look at the total yards they had only 80, they had 82 on a kickoff return. So when you put that on there, their offense hasn't been on the field much. When an offense is not on the field, it has a hard time getting its timing down. Saskatchewan's controlling the game offensively. Well, that 82-yard kickoff return by McAdoo set up the touchdown throw to Zatilny, and then Wilkerson added the other touchdown on a 52-yard interception run back. Short kick by Osbaldiston, and it bounces back towards the line of scrimmage. And Jeff Treffin picks that up very quickly and then is decked out of bounds. An excellent field position again for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Saskatchewan head coach John Gregory has one of the hottest pieces of jewelry in Regina these days, the Ryder Grey Cup rings we talked about on Live at the Half. And there they are, they're big rings. They have to be to hold 43 stones, one for every point. The Ryder scored against the Thai Cats in their Grey Cup victory at the Sky Dome in November. Weigh about 55 grams each and worth in excess of $10,000. And there's the ad appearing in the Regina Leader Post these days. Two Grey Cup rings for sale. If you call the number, you get a recorded message, so they've not been able to find out who has placed the ad. And if you're interested in calling long distance, the area code is 306. <laughs> Those championship rings are bigger than my wristwatch. Boy, they're awful big. Gee, they're nice. Sideline pattern to McCray. Lance Shields bounced him out of bounds at the 48. That previous kick by Osbaldiston traveled just 15 yards. With the ball bouncing back towards the line of scrimmage and picked up by Treflin, immediately bounced out of bounds. There was no return. Six, you see Bob Poley just sitting back there, going to help anything that shows up. Glanton tries to come around on a game. All day chases him over, but Poley flattens him. 
When you are uncovered as Poli was, your job is to sit back and help anybody that needs it. Reverse! Fake reverse. pitch, the handoff to Elgard, the slot back, cutting back in on a reverse type of action. He fumbles the football. Who's got it? Hamilton claims they've got the ball. Elgard appeared to have a first down. So that turnover gives the Tie Cats the football at the 43. Slot back reverse. A little fake toss and then hand it back. And you see the ball come loose. Elgard had the first down, but he didn't have the ball. And Ronnie Glanton's there to get the first down for the Tie Cats. And he made sure he was protecting that ball at the 43 after dropping on it. Here's a handoff to. McAdoo, the fake pass, and then the handoff to McAdoo, McAdoo and that will be a gain of about four yards. Dave Albright, the linebacker, made the tackle. 9.33 is the time remaining in the third quarter. 23-20, Saskatchewan leads Hamilton. Eight of five, second and five. Balls on the 48. Ball is at the 48, so it is a gain of five. Second and five, Hamilton. Zatilny on the sidelines makes the catch, but he was out of bounds. Ball was thrown high. Zatilny jumps to catch the football. Nobody touches him. His momentum carried him out of bounds. He couldn't get the foot down. And again, they have to turn the ball over. And they got to punt it. Kerrigan hasn't looked all that sharp in the ball game tonight. No, not really. He hasn't thrown the ball with the crispness that I know he can throw it with. He's an excellent passer, a pure passer. Bad snap. Osbaldiston kicks it back into the end zone. If it doesn't roll through, it's a touchdown. And got it. Richie Hall. funny right from the start. I, I don't know what's going on there. I thought it was going to be a fake because he normally the kicker stands and waits on it. This time what he's hoping to do is kick it clear out of the end zone. He didn't get it good enough and Richie Hall outrun him. You gamble when you kick the football because there's going to be more green jerseys coming in than you're going to have white jerseys to get the football. Well as Baldiston on the run was trying to boot that ball right through the end zone but that ball bounced and it bounced perfectly right into the arms of Richie Hall. And now Ridgeway adds the point after. And the Rough Riders lead by 10. Now, I don't believe that, that that was a punt. There had to be a fake on it. We've seen enough games to know that the punter stands there and gets you the football. He doesn't start to run. Richie Hall's a little bit tired of well he should be, but it was a heck of an effort to go get the ball when our balls were kicked. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. I think that was a direct was a, snap to Sam Lopes. Sam Lopes. It was. It was a direct snap. It was too high. See, Sam Lopes is only about four yards behind him. When he snaps it high, you don't have a chance to adjust. And then when Osbaldiston kicked it, Richie Hall ran it down. Ray Robertus appeared to be snapping that ball directly to Sam Lopes. It was high, deflected away from him, and Richie Hall is the beneficiary as he to grab the ball in the end zone for the touchdown. Only his second career touchdown. His only other journey into the end zone was back in 1983 on a punt return. So the Rough Riders, to the delight of their fans, enjoy a 10-point lead as Derek McAdoo starts back, being chased by Treplin. And Treplin, with that good speed, forced him inside for Ray Elgard to make the tackle. Yeah, he caught that ball close to the sidelines, and when you're going to try to go back to the middle of the field, that's a long way to go. Treplin got the outside and forced him to turn in before he wanted it, and Elgard's there to make the tackle. 14 yards on the return. Treplin, working only on special teams, has certainly made a contribution tonight for the Rough Riders. First and 10, Hamilton. They are at their own 26-yard line. 837 remaining in the third quarter. McAdoo gets away from Jurison, but Albright is over there quickly with help from Hogan Suter. 
what we're getting is the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are playing a lot of the defense they played in at Grey Cup where they bring Glenn Suter up to the outside linebacker position. But they're not always blitzing them. So you watch when McAdoo goes outside, watch for number 27, along with Dave Albright, the middle linebacker. You see Jerson, number three, Hope, Glenn Suter, and Albright, all there to make the tackle and limit it to three yards. Well, the Rough Riders have certainly changed up their defenses against Kerrigan in this ballgame. They learned last year in the Grey Cup game that they couldn't pressure as Kerrigan ate them alive in the first half and they had to alter their defensive schemes in the second half and they were rewarded with a 43-40 win. That is Rocky DiPietro's 656th career catch and a first down at the 40-yard line. But the big thing they're doing tonight, Suter will be in the middle sometimes, then he's up at the outside linebacker. But when he's up there, he's not always blitzing. So that throws Kerrigan off. Normally when they brought him up last year, he blitzed. But tonight they're, they're mixing it up on him. Well, the man who was supposed to receive that direct snap was Sam Louts on the play that backfired on the Tie Cats. And this time he is the ball carrier. Two, two, Glenn. Sam Lox is going to be a good fullback. A little bit bigger now. He's up to about 225 pounds. 6'1", out of McMaster. Played some slots, got good hands. He's a running back. Watch Picking up the block. They've got to get him involved in the offense, though, or they'll take McAdoo away. You've got to get everybody in. Penalty flag. Intercepted by Albert Brown. It was intended for his utility, but there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. There's also a penalty flag in the area of the reception, or the interception. <laughs> Offside against the Ticats, but a pass interference call against Saskatchewan will negate the interception. I don't know who the interference call was on, but anyway, it's a first down for Hamilton. They got away with it. Kerrigan threw that ball, didn't get it out in front of the receiver. Albert Brown was step for step with Zatilli. So it's first and 10 for Hamilton. They're at the 48 of Saskatchewan, trailing by 10 points. As he threw Rashevich, a blitzing linebacker, really hammered the Hamilton quarterback. Rich Estelle is wide open on this play, but Kerrigan cannot get the feet planted to throw the football. Watch him. He's trying to get set. There, he's got somebody in his face, and when he moves up, he took a tremendous hit by Rasevich, and the ball goes low. But the guy was open, but a quarterback has to be able to get those feet set and step and throw the football. That's good defense by number 74 in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 6-13, remaining in the third quarter, second and 10. Harrigan again in big trouble. This time they sacked the quarterback, but what they have done to this Hamilton Ticat offensive line in the last two plays, they have collapsed the pocket, which means you may not sack them, but you will force a bad throw or a pass that could be intercepted. It's just collapsing around him, and he has nowhere to go. Well, the Riders recorded the most sacks in 1989, but Ted Heath said that the number of sacks should not be a barometer for determining the success of a team defensively. Or offensively. Oh, one of the officials really got hammered on the sidelines. And that's always a danger when the ball bounces back towards the line of scrimmage. 5.46 is the time remaining in the third quarter. Hutchinson, the head linesman, number 82, really got hammered as that ball bounced back towards the line of scrimmage, but fortunately, he's all right. You see him trying to follow that ball and at the same time get out of the road of Jeff Treplin, and Treplin ran right into him. It appeared as though he was hurt more seriously, but fortunately, he is going to continue. He'll be a little sore tomorrow. 
sure. You don't know what the ball players feel like. You know, let's just think. Jeff Treffler's a little guy. Why would have been, a, you know, a Gary Lewis or somebody at about 6'4", 270? It would have hurt a little bit more. Well, it's been an entertaining opening game at Taylor Field in Regina. It started slowly with no scoring in the first quarter. But since then, they've made up for it. Tim McRae got into that secondary and almost broke away, but Rod Skillman hauled him down, but not before he picked up eight yards, maybe even nine. Watch McCray. Takes the hand up, turn upfield now. Keep the legs moving. They never stop. Pump, pump, pump. Just keep running out of tackles. Heading straight upfield and eight yards. Looked like he was going to be tackled for no game. Second and two. Nelson Jones shopping for that first down and driven back. I think he makes this uh, first down on this shot. This is just a good, good contact at the point of attack. Here they come. You see him right in there. Rod Skillman. Glenn. Here comes Milson Jones. They make the hit in the air. 78 Patterson. Then you get Rockford there to help out. Sonny Gordon gets a little bit of him. They're going to be short a little bit. Saskatchewan Rough Rider from 1989. Well, let's go. Enjoying proceedings here at Taylor Field in this opening game of the 1990 season. First down and on the Hamilton bench with Todd Dillon putting his helmet on and getting some instruction. It could be the Tie Cats are going to make a quarterback change. Well, Dillon had a tremendous last four or five games of the Tie Cats last year in '89. You know, Kerrigan was the leader, but so far in three quarters, the offense has not moved the football. Maybe it's time to shake things up. Todd's a little more mobile, Mike, but maybe they need that. Here's the blitz. But Austin has time. Throwing for Mark Guy, and he simply overthrew him. Wilkerson was defending against Mark Guy. They can't wait for him. And he was doing a pretty good job, too, on it. He forced Guy to try to feel to come back inside, and when he went inside, then Rock was coming to help. Second and 10, Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders at their own 49 yard line. They lead it by a score of 30 to 20. Elgar makes the catch, first down. That's just strength right there. Sonny Gordon has pretty good coverage on him. The pass is a little bit behind Elgar, but watch him just stop, reach back with those big hands, grab it, and pull it in. See Corbin in there, watch him throw the ball. Now what, just reach back, take the hit, put it away. Nothing Gordon can do but hang on and pull him down. That's, just, that's strength and size, 225 pounds and six foot three. Austin has passed for almost 200 yards more than Kerrigan. He was looking for Tim McRae in the sideline. He was being covered by Sonny Gordon. Yeah, very wise. He threw it away that time. He looked inside for Narcisse. He couldn't throw it in there. And when he went back to the sideline, Gordon had McRae covered. He just threw it out of bounds. That's a smart play. Well, unless that wind dies down, the advantage that the Ticats will have in the final quarter, the wind will be at their backs. And it's definitely affected the kicking game in this third quarter. Second and ten. Austin fakes over the middle. The pass is complete to Elgar. Elgar. But he'll be well short of the first down. He picks up only about five Elgar yards. Uh, 2.43 is the time left in the third quarter, and John Gregory sends out the field goal unit. Well, Elgar was almost totally ignored through most of the first half, but Late in the second quarter and in this third quarter, he's been a prime target of Kent Austin. Yeah, now he's had like seven interceptions. First half, he had a 
has thrown in the football in the second. I guess, you know, you've got so many good receivers, you can't, you got to work it around a little bit. Algar now has six receptions for the ball game. Ridgeway's kick is wide. And the Ticats will concede a single point. So with 2.20 remaining in the third quarter, it's now a 31-20 football game. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders leading the Hamilton Tiger Caps. The other game in this opening night, in case you missed the score, 31-26. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers at Lansdowne Park defeating the Ottawa Rough Riders. Tomorrow night, Calgary is at BC. On Saturday, Edmonton visits Toronto. Well, Kerrigan's still in there right now. He, he's just got to get something going. The offensive line now, they've got to buckle up. they got to give him some time. They know they have to throw the football now. They're going to be coming hard. Draw play. Sam Lokes. The ball is Sam Lokes. Watch how he hands that draw off, Don. He goes past him and then hands it back to him. Hopefully, the, what that does is allow the linebacker to get out of there and then let him run. Let's see what you see. Watch him go past him. They slide it in the back door, then Locks just runs for coverage. But again, Albright did what he's supposed to do. Stay there and make sure he doesn't have it before you get in pass coverage. Is that an unusual maneuver on the drop line? Yeah, it, it is. It's only going to be good a couple times, and it won't be good for a few more games. But once you see it, you'll know what to look for. Is that ball bounce, or are they going to give him the catch? Winfield on the sidelines. Grab that football, and he is credited with the reception for a first down. What, you know, they may be down, but that's what Kerrigan has to do. He's got to start putting together first downs. First downs eventually will get you into the end zone for a touchdown. Don't try to get it back all at once because they haven't been sharp. When you're not sharp, you got to come back and work harder. Here comes Hall. Ticats, however, were able to pick it up as Kerrigan went to the other side for Di Pietro. The throw was low. It will be second down to him. Again, I think he saw the blitz coming, went away from the blitz, tried to get the ball out to Di Pietro, and just threw it down too low for Rocky to get to it. That's a big offensive line that the Hamilton Tiger Cats send out there. You've got Sanderson. 260, Harley at 270, Riley at 270, Miles Burrell at 290, or maybe more. Winfield, first down, he breaks the tackle, he's going to score, they won't catch him. Well, the heck of the throw. They came after him, 56 yards for the play, but what happened is Winfield come down the inside, he catches the football. It looked like a couple of Saskatchewan Rough Riders collided trying to make the tackle. They knocked each other off. Winfield got free, and as you said, when he gets behind him, they're going to get him. Here come the blitz. You see Eddie Lowe going in. Watch this. Jumps back inside right here. All three of them collide. No one makes the tackle. Winfield runs for a touchdown. Having that great lateral movement enabled Winfield to dance around a couple of defenders and then utilize the speed to get into the end zone, and it's 31-26 with 23 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And Paul Osbaldiston will add the point after. So again, it's a four-point football game. It's good effort by Winfield. Oh, really, they're going to put everybody back, back at home. Real quick, get the ball in the hands of the receiver. Let him that do one his is number, and that's what Winfield did. Well, there was concern hey, in Hamilton when Tony Champion left the team after the 1989 season. We got the win, brother. We got the win. But with an athlete, the ability of a Winfield, you've got a pretty good replacement. Sure do. Look at this. Albright tries to make the tackle, and Hogue, Brown, and Albright all collide, and then Winfield goes. Two years ago, he was the runner-up in the Shannon Awards, you know, the outstanding player in the country. And then last year, injuries, and Tony Champion, he comes up, catches 95 passes, and leads the league. But Winfield's capable of having that type of season, and that's what they need from him. Another short kick, and Paul Bushy. He's <laughs> out of bounds. Paul Bushy. Good field position for the Riders. 
as they will spot it at the 51. Paul Bushy, it, it's strange with Saskatchewan. You know, they have uh, Bruce Boyko, Paul Bushy, and Chris Joskis, all young first-year players, all from Hamilton. Bushy went to Cathedral High, Boyko went to West Mountain High, and Joskis is from Burlington. Now, that, you know, you grow up watching the black and gold play, now you're playing against them. Got to be a little bit frightened. Football. That's exactly it. It wasn't the throw. All Austin does is throw it to the open area, and Narcy showed great quickness to go get the football. What a job Narcy did to give the Rough Riders a first down on the final play of the third quarter. The start of the fourth quarter. Rough Riders are first and 10 of the 47 of the Hamilton Ticats. 31-27 is the score. Saskatchewan leading. Tim McRae trying the short side. He won't go anywhere. Ticats close that off rather quickly. A big edge statistically for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They also lead in time of possession, but they're ahead by just four on the score. Surprising, you know, when you look at the differences in the yardage, at this, in six minutes is quite a bit of spread after three quarters. So it shows you they're controlling the football, but the big plays that have helped him. McAdoo returned and he cuts out his 56 yards. They're scoring quick. There he goes. Woo! Austin looking for Mark Guy. He can't catch up with him. Bring Mark Guy down the field on Wilkerson. Take him down about 18 yards. Turn him to the inside and plant and slide back to the sideline. Because when you turn to the inside, the defensive backs come after you. Then you try to slide away from him. But he overthrew it. Kent Austin, who did not get the starting assignment with the Rough Riders last year, but did take over from Tom Burgess about eight games into the season. And didn't relinquish the starting job. Carried right through. Became a great cup star. And became the Rough Rider number one quarterback this year. As a result, Burgess was traded. Wally Zatilli went back to his goal line. Slipped, got up, and look at him go. But there's a flag back at the 20-yard line. So all that Go for naught on the part of Wally Zatilny. He went down, but I don't think anybody touched him. No, they didn't. I thought I'll just sit here thinking that Wally knows better than to try to give ground back near the goal line. But when he slipped and fell, everybody relaxed and he jumped up and took off. That was a heck of an effort. And it's too bad this penalty's gonna wipe it out. And it was a clipping call against the Ticats. And they're looking at Wally Zatilny's right hand over on the sidelines. He may have jammed his fingers. Well, we'll see. Take a look at it. Well, he's caught it. Now he, does. he had nowhere to go. He's starting to get too much ground. You see number 39, Gadavakis, punch, punch a guy or push a guy in the back. And flag comes down and it puts him down to the 19-yard line. First to 10 the 19-yard Richard Nurse has replaced Wally Zatilny as a receiver. And this is Winfield. Carrying it for a first down Hamilton. Now Richard Nurse is another Hamilton guy, but at least he's playing there. Out of Sir Thomas Moore High School, went to Canisius College in New York. Had a real fine training camp, earned a spot on this roster. I know he's happy to be getting into the football game, get his first taste of action. But I guess I'll hope until he gets back in there. He's a big play guy. First and ten, Hamilton. The ball is at the 30-yard line. 13 minutes is the time remaining in the fourth quarter. Midfield on the receiving end of another throw. Forced out of bounds by Harrison. That will be very close to another first down. Trainer Ray Jones looking at that right hand of Wally Zatilny. Causing him some discomfort, but he wants to get back into the ball game. Yeah, he is. Well, Wally works too hard to get that starting position here, so well, you don't ever want to get out of the lineup. Right now, they need all the help they can get, and he's experienced. You need experience when you're trying to come back and win a game. 
Second and less than a yard for the Tie Cats, and Kerrigan will keep and get the first down. Oh, there's the quarterback, Mike Kerrigan. This is where Kerrigan would like to put a drive together. The Tie Cats in this fourth quarter also have the advantage of that favoring win. He can be patient right now with the wind in his back. Just go to work and methodically take what they give you, get the first downs, get it down and score. He's time up on the clock. You have a wind advantage. He's got nothing to worry about. A lot of time. You can relax and play football. Hand off to McAdoo. McAdoo is being chased by Gary Lewis. And he's brought down by... Richie Hall, who came underneath of McAdoo, and Lewis came over the top of him. It's almost like a statue play where the back sets and comes around for the play, but it really didn't fool anybody. Watch how fast it's done. See, Lewis comes in, spins off, locates the ball, now go get it. Once you find it, go get it. When they force him back in, you see Richie Hall hits him low, and Lewis goes over the top. A gain of one, second and nine. Hamilton with 11.25 remaining in the ball game. by Hope. Kerrigan was looking for Richard Estelle. He overthrew him. And Larry Hope came up with the interception. With 11-13 left in the game. Field. Four. Field. Saskatchewan leading by four gets the football back on a Larry Hogue interception. The Riders were telling us yesterday that they wanted to give Kerrigan some coverages that he wasn't expecting. This is a perfect mm -hmm. example. You, show, you saw Albright and Lowe blitz up the middle, but if you took a look, you saw number 74, Dan Rasevich, running with Richard Estelle, and Larry Hogue sitting deep. So what they do is show him a blitz, then drop a linebacker out there to run with those receivers, and then Larry Hogue's there to help him. You should beat the linebacker, but Hogue was there to make the play, and that is a different coverage, and they haven't adjusted to it. Good game plan by Saskatchewan. First and ten, Saskatchewan, the Rough Riders at the 47 of Hamilton. This crowd became very quiet after Winfield scored that 56-yard touchdown. But following that Hogue interception, they're back into the ball game. Tim McRae breaking a couple of tackles, but his advance is restricted to about three yards. 24,362, the official attendance tonight. Here at Taylor Field in Regina in this 1990 CFL season opener. Need of uh, four on the play. Right now, Saskatchewan would love to put seven on the board. But they'll take three. That'll give them a seven-point lead. So what they want to do is just don't turn it over. Donald Narcisse again came back to that football, but they're ruling he was out of bounds. They say that his feet went out of bounds before he made the catch, and John Gregory is upset. Well, we should, if you get a replay of it, we'll be able to see it. It, it, it is close. When the ball is coming, Don Narcisse's feet slip out from under him, but let's take a look. I thought he was in. He, he catches the ball, then slides up. From our vantage point, we got a good view of that. He was in bounds when he caught it, then his foot was out laying on the ground. He slipped when the ball was in the air, but no avail, it's no good. So Mike Lezecki comes into the ball game on third down. And that ball into the wind isn't going to travel a great distance. Picked up by Zatilny, and Zatilny is forced out of bounds at the 25. 10-16 is the time left with the Rough Riders hanging on to the first time player. All about. Well, all the excitement, all the action of the Calgary Stampede comes your way this weekend on Sports Weekend at 3 Eastern Time. And Michael Andretti will go for his third win in a row as the Indy Circuit moves to Cleveland, while Top Fuel, Pro Stock, and Funny Cars tear up the track in San Air. The West Coast hosts the Royal Victoria Boat Race. It all starts at 3 Eastern on the CBC Sports Weekend. First and 10, Hamilton.
Hamilton. The ball is at the 25-yard line. The Rough Riders have held a big edge statistically in almost every department, but the Tie Cats have benefited from big plays. Richard Estelle making the reception. They've got Richard another first down. Get a little bit of pressure on Mike Carey and Anton Glenn. Chuck Klingbeal coming in. Interesting, in March, he bench pressed 600 pounds at a competition in Michigan. No wonder he can throw people out of the way, but there he comes, number 99. He gets there just as he lets go, and he gets hold of you, you're going down. Chuck Klingbeal was a factor, a big factor for the Rough Riders in the Grey Cup game. Slip, but still managed to get the pass away. It's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Earl Winfield. Good coverage downfield. Bootleg action. Kerrigan Fakes comes out to the side of the field. When Wally Zatoni goes deep and comes back to the sideline, Larry Hogue ran right underneath it. That was good coverage. So he looks outside. Now he has to come back. Throws it in the middle. Winfield really got to catch his football. Gets and bounces out. Got to hang on to that one. Good throw. Second and 10, Hamilton, 9.15 remaining here at Taylor Field in Regina. Kerrigan for Estelle, a big first down to the 50 of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That time, just find the seam right behind the linebackers on the hash marks and away from the secondary, and Kerrigan put it right on the money to Estelle. All right, you see Glenn Suter working in the middle of the field. You can see a seam, it's that area between the back that they each have to go a long way to cover, and they can't get there quick enough. And Estelle does, and Kerrigan hits him. Kerrigan likes to release that football quickly in a three-step drop. His rhythm, break that rhythm, you heard him. But if he gets on, he gets on, he gets going well, you're in trouble. There it is again to Rocky D. Pietro. All the way to the 19. Rocky D. Pietro just releases off the line of scrimmage, and when the linebacker disappears underneath, they just throw it to him, and then he runs. Heck of an effort. Watch it. It goes all right out to cover the back. That means no one in the middle. Di Pietro catches it. Suter misses the tackle. Estelle tries to help him. Kirsten runs him down from behind. A 32-yard game for the CFL's all-time pass reception leader. This one for Zatilni. He's hauled down. Penalty flag on Albert Brown. Don't think there's much doubt about that as Albert Brown reached out and pulled down Wally Zatilni. Three steps, lay it up, let Zatilni go Let's get go. it. But Brown had a hold of him, he couldn't get there. 7.54 remains, we see the tail end of the play, and you see Albert Brown reaching out, there's no question that he stopped Wally Zatilni from going after that football. So that puts it inside the five. First and goal from the three. intended for Di Pietro. Larry Hogue broke that up. Di Pietro and Kerrigan are certainly familiar with each other. I'm sure they discuss football each day. When they drive from St. Catharines to Hamilton, they reside in St. Catharines. When they drive into Hamilton together to practice sessions. Every day. They they work a lot you know, in the offseason of uh, playing basketball. They work out preseason, throwing the football. They know each other pretty well. There was an offside call against Saskatchewan on the play. So the penalty is half the distance to the goal line. It's first and goal from inside the two. They don't make it. A little surprise here. You have a first down, one and a half yards. You would have your big guys in there blasting. Leave them in the little guys. Oh, here they come. I mean, you've got to put it in the end zone when you get on the one and a half yard line. Let's see the lead. All right, here it comes. Here comes McAdoo. Louts is carrying the ball. McAdoo loses the battle to Rasevich. He gets knocked backwards. And then the linebacker is in a position to knock Louts down. Second and goal from the one and a half. Full house backfield. McAdoo gets it. 6.46 remaining. And the Hamilton. 
Hamilton Ticats have regained the lead, 33-31, with the point after still to come. Sam Laux, Ernie Schremeyer, the backup running back, in at the back blocking back positions. Laux leads it. Schremeyer, you see, saw Laux go by. Here comes McAdoo. Schremeyer lead blocks. Laux makes his block outside, and then McAdoo just blasts into the end zone. Well executed. Put it in the end zone when you're that that close to the goal line. Ball as Baldiston with the point after. Gives the Thai Cats a three-point lead with 6.46 remaining. That time, the Thai Cats put together a good drive, 85 yards and seven plays for the major score. They were aided by that pass interference penalty, but then Derek McAdoo on a second and goal from the one and a half put it in. Good job of blocking up front. Sam Lauk kicks out. Now, the guy that fills the hold is a defensive back. A good running back will beat one man for a yard and a half. Even if he makes a clean tackle, you're not going to stop McAdoo or McClay or somebody like that to get the yard and a half. Well, the field goal will tie it, but the Rough Riders are going into that very strong wind blowing out of the east. Southeasterly breeze. Pretty close to put it into the or through the uprights. This one bounces into the end zone. Stacy Harrison back in the end zone. He's going to concede a single point. So now the Rough Riders need a touchdown. That is a 79-yard kickoff by Paul Osbaldiston. Hamilton 35. The man who established the league record for scoring in 1989 is off to a big start in his attempts to break that record in 1990. A week from tonight, we'll be at McMahon Stadium in Calgary as the Stampeders entertain the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Our telecast begins at 9.30 Eastern. We hope you'll be joining us for that one. Austin is hit from behind by Grover Covington. The man who leads in quarterback sacks adds to his total. That's number 149 in the CFL career of Grover Covington. Well, Coach Smith, Ted Smith was telling us beforehand, look for Grover to have a big year. He said he's going to come on. He shows great speed. Austin steps up into the pocket. He just runs them down. So the leading sacker is off to a good start tonight. And he sees that quarterback uncovered. I think his eyes light up. Oh, they really do. You know, those defensive linemen, they like the quarterback. Donald Narcisse was the target. It was over his head as he was being covered by Lance Shields. And Saskatchewan will be forced to kick on third and 15. 5.52 is the time remaining. So again, they got good pressure up the field by Covington and Skillman. That forced Austin to step in and throw the football. In the first half, he was able to sit back there and throw on time and everything. This is why the pressure, pressure from the defensive line forces bad throws. So Tilney and Winfield are back for this third down punt. Zeki had some problems in accepting that snap. This high kick taken by Winfield. He splits a couple of defenders and gets it back to the 30. There's also a penalty flag. One downfield and one back at the line of scrimmage. It could be a no yards call against Saskatchewan, but the initial flag was back at the line of scrimmage. The major penalty of these fifty yards is thirty-six. Ken Lazaruk is the referee in charge tonight, and there has been a malfunction with the wireless microphone he is wearing, so we'll have to wait for him to signal as to the penalty call. No yards against Saskatchewan. That takes the ball back to the Hamilton 54-yard line. Now Kerrigan, after trailing by almost 200 yards in the passing department in the third quarter, has improved 
His statistics. First down to 54. You know, everybody knows he can throw the football. He just needs a little bit of time. Guys make a couple catches, make some first downs, and get confidence. When he is throwing the football, nobody throws it better. Al Bruno is complaining about something over on the sidelines. He's way out on the playing field along with John Salamantis. He did not time clock. I think he's a little upset with the spot of the football. Well, he wanted the time clock. He was down to eight seconds already. He didn't reset it. Yeah, he told him, that time clock set right? You are wrong. You are wrong. Carrigan goes to Winfield on the sidelines. He takes that pass in front of the linebacker, Dan Rashevich. That's a pretty tough assignment for a linebacker trying to cover a player of the caliber of a Winfield. Especially now, just watching Carrigan, how he's releasing the ball, Don. Watch him. Gets back, gets set, and now he's throwing that ball with a lot of confidence. You can't ask Grasovich to get out there and cover Winfield, and with Kerry, you give him a little bit of time, and he'll take you apart. 456. 456 is the time remaining. Kerrigan on second and one gives to McAdoo. He gets the first down. Some thought in the third quarter that perhaps Todd Dillon was going to come into the ball game to replace Kerrigan, but Al Bruno has stuck with his number one quarterback, and he has been rewarded. I, I, when you know, we saw him over there, yeah, first what Hamilton. I was thinking is, give him a chance to he gets the wind at his back. And if he doesn't get it going, then take him out. But you can't give up on a guy like Kerrigan because he throws the ball too well. First and ten, he's throwing for Zatilde. He can't catch up with him. He was in a foot race with Albert Brown. He got behind him, but the throw was just a little too far. That's a tough pattern to time at the best of time. And when the ball was in the air, as far as that was, like 50 yards, that's a tough one to judge for, for distance. And he just couldn't quite get it, but he did have him beat. It will be second and 10, Hamilton. The ball is at the 44 of Saskatchewan. Hamilton leading 35-31. They have the football. They also have a very strong win at their back. Right now they do. Richard Estelle makes a diving catch at the 20-yard line. That's a great catch. Saskatchewan that time dropped back into a two-deep defense. Six men underneath it. And then Estelle tries to go to the open spot over the middle. Rush four. Here they come. First and ten, Hamilton. Ball's in here. Throw it to the open area. Watch Estelle. Go get it. Man to man with Rasevich on the inside receiver. Can't cover him much better. That's just good effort by Estelle. They didn't go to Estelle much in the first half, but he has been a key target in this second half. They never got their offense on track. They couldn't get things going, but right now they have it going. Drop play. Sam Lauchs, the same type of play we saw earlier in the ball game, where he gets behind the back and slips it in the other side. Flag down on the play. Quarterback is supposed to go by him and step back and hand it in. It takes a little bit longer to develop. 3.04 is the time remaining here at Taylor Field. On that previous play, there was a penalty flag against the Tie Cats, unnecessary roughness. That takes the ball back to the 33-yard line, and with 3:04 remaining, it's second and 24. Hamilton. Al Bruno taking advantage of the timeout to confer with his quarterback, Mike Kerrigan. And John Gregory, at one point in this ball game, saw his team in front by 11. And they appeared to be in control. But those defenses that seem to be proving so puzzling to Mike Kerrigan earlier in the ball game were suddenly solved by the experienced Hamilton quarterback. He's been on the field long enough to see them now. You know, they put some first downs together. But if you can get an offense to and off the field, they never get in sync, never get any rhythm, and you can't figure it out. But now he's got to figure it out, and he's doing a good job of executing. Throwing for Zatilde, intercepted. Albert Brown makes the interception of the three. Al 
Albert Brown had him covered step for step. Excellent defense by number four. Ball was underthrown. He makes the interception. I know they don't have the greatest field position, but they have the football. Here they come on the blitz. You saw Albright coming. He lays it out, but look at the coverage. Great coverage. The defensive back, Albert Brown, watches Wally Zatilny's eyes. When he looks up for the ball, Brown looks up for the ball, and he makes the interception. Rough Riders have to move 108 yards if they're going to score a touchdown to win this ball game. They've got 241 in which to do it. First play is good. Donald Narcisse has a first down. Well, that's a good throw. Number 18, Sonny Gordon is standing between Austin and Narcisse, and he has to throw it over top of Gordon and right down into Narcisse's hands. He catches it and steps out of bounds. Good throw, stops the clock. Narcisse wide right. Half guy to the left. Austin throws left and misses guy. 2.32 is the time left. Second and 10, Saskatchewan. for Guy, knocked away by Wilkerson. Excellent coverage. Receiver makes that hook, turns to the inside, the ball's in the air, he's got to come back to the football. Wilkerson beat him to it and knocked it down. Good coverage. And the Rough Riders looking at third and ten, send out the punting unit. And Al Bruno knows that he's going to get the ball back in excellent field position. Mike Lezecki stands at the goal line. Wally Zatilny takes it on the run. Penalty flag. No yards. The call against Saskatchewan. And that's almost unavoidable with those short kicks. The ball hanging in that very strong wind. And a very alert Zatilny took that ball on the dead run. I'm sure, knowing full well that even if he mishandled it, there was going to be a no-yards call. Yeah, and you know, you have to almost feel sorry for the kicker. Lezecki and the other months that have been against the win, and each time, you know, Hamilton's received enough of them, they know not to get deep. So they're up tight, and when that ball's coming down, so Tony, as you say, he judges it, goes in, takes a chance if he misses it, and he gets no yards anyway. So, you know, being the type of player he is, an excellent returner, he knows how to use the rules to his advantage. Well, John Gregory, Looks at the clock, 2.19 remaining. Fully aware that unless his Rough Riders can come up with a big play, a turnover to get that football back, this one is almost certainly over. Yeah, they're going to be a little careful with it now. Kerrigan well, throws Di Pietro. Intercepted by Larry Hogue. Or did the ball hit the ground first? I guess it did. It might, yeah, Larry Hogue knew it hit the ground. From up here, it looked like it bounced and say off Di Pietro and up, and he catches it. But watch Larry Hogue. He knew it bounced on the ground. Throw it in the hole to Di Pietro. Let's watch it. Di Pietro slips. Ball hits his hand, hits the ground, bounces up. From our position, I thought the ball may have bounced off the shoulder pads of Di Pietro, but it did hit the ground first. That's the roar of the fans from this side. They all thought so, too. One of the great advantages of replay. This one is intercepted by Hogue, however. I'm surprised that Hamilton would continue to throw. With 2.19 on the clock, with a four-point lead, I was looking for Derek McAdoo to get two cracks running the football. If they don't get the first down, kick the field goal, and you get in good shape. But watch it. He's double covered. Watch him. See, Di Pietro's not open. You saw number 91, Alapate, right in front of him. He jumps, forces the tip, and Larry Hogue got it, and you've opened the door for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. From the shotgun. And Austin up the middle to Nelson Jones, incomplete. 2.01 is the time remaining. The second interception for Larry Hogue. That's all really. The Rough Riders. 
25 yards away from the Hamilton goal line. Mark Guy makes the catch and then is taken out of bounds by Wilkerson. That's good concentration by Guy because Wilkerson was in position to intercept it again. That ball hung in the air going out there and a good defensive back reacted to it, but Guy won the battle. 155 is the time left. You see him going after it. Guy reaches back, gets those hands on it. Wilkerson does all he can, just pulls him out of bounds. Wilkerson came very close to making an interception on the play. Very close. Close enough. They're over there checking to see whether it's a first down. It looks like it's just a little bit short. If it is, they're going to have to waste the play to get that first and 10. 155. They had a lot of time. Well, you know, what about two he drug him out of bounds. Ball to go here, but he was not out of bounds. He him right there and drug him off. Still moving. He was quite ball all the way out of bounds. I think that was Ben Zambiazzi. He's still over there talking. Arguing that the play was not out of bounds. Right. Zambiazzi, who works with special teams and linebackers with the Thai Cats. That's the closest I've ever seen. It. What he was saying is when. Wilkerson made the tackle. The play was dead while he was still inbounds, and then he dragged him out. He said the clock should not stop. However, the clock did stop. It won't start until the ball is snapped, and Kent Austin gets the first down. They've got a lot of time, 153 on the first clock. Down. You have time to win it. You just gotta, this is when you have to execute. You can't have mistakes. You've got to be precise. You've got to be exact. If you are, you got a chance to win it. First and 10, Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders at the 35. They're ready to go as soon as that whistle blows from the shotgun. Austin can't find his primary target, runs the football, and will try and get out of bounds, which he does. Good move, it opened up. You know, the defensive lineman rushed in lanes, and he lane to his left, opened up. Good coverage downfield. He got 10 yards and then started to head for the sideline to get that first and 10 and stop the clock. And that's what he did. 143 is the time left. 35 31, the Thai Cats lead it. Austin for Narcisse. and 10 at the 50 of the Ticats. 139 left. Right now. Let's go, baby. First and 10, Hamilton, 50. Again, from the shotgun, low snap. Austin picked it up and threw over the middle and hit Daryl Corbin with the ball as he was looking for Ray Elgar. I think the referee knocked it down. I think it hit the umpire right there and there because Corbin turned to catch the ball and the ball was already tipped. Watch this. Well, it does hit the official. I thought it hit Corbin, but the official was trying to get out of the way of the throw. That was pretty good defense by the official. Second and 10 from the 50. 128 remaining. Austin on the sidelines, way over the head of Ray Elgar. And it will be third and ten. Last gasp right here for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, right now you take the play. My belief is you take the play, you have the most confidence in of completing. And let's go to work. Don't mess around with anything that you don't feel comfortable with. Well, a winning result doesn't carry the same significance as their Grey Cup game. But it does have much of the same drama. Did Fairholme make the catch? Yes. Or Ray Elgar, I should say. Great catch. That ball almost hit the ground. Elgar reached down and got it. That's an excellent catch by Ray Elgar. Across it into the middle in front of the safety man. Austin found him. Still got a minute and 16 seconds. In no hurry. Let's take a look at it. Step up. What's the throw? But here's the thing. Low. Get those hands underneath, cradle it in. Back to the live action. The pass intended for Guy incomplete. It will be second and 10. The ball is at the 33 yard line with 107 left. Fairholm playing out of play now. Good pressure on Austin that time. James.
Adams Ellingson comes out of the ball game. Air home back at the slot back position along with Elgar. Saskatchewan from the shotgun, the handoff inside to Nelson Jones.
interception with just two minutes remaining. Well, they're going to look back on this game and start to wonder when you have a four-point lead and two plays with a couple minutes left in the ball and why you don't run the football. And uh, that interception by Hogue turned out to be a killer and then that big run by Nelson Jones. Talking of Nelson Jones, he's the ball carrier again and he picks up another first down and that should do it. 35 seconds. Excellent run by Milson Jones. They're not taking any chance. They got their short yardage team in there. Just going to take it straight ahead, knock them down, and run. Larry Hogue's played an outstanding game tonight back there. But you have to wonder about the strategy of the Ticats because they were well within the field goal range of Osbaldiston. If they didn't move the football, he could have easily split the uprights to give them a seven-point lead. Then even if they score, it's tied to go to overtime. But well, there had to be a reason for it. I don't know what it was. This time it's Tim McRae to the 25-yard line. 14 seconds left. And there's not much that Al Bruno can do right now. Not a thing he can do about it. He's, he right now, he's the one. He's got to be wondering himself why he allowed himself to be talked in to doing what he did. You know what I mean? It's easy to stand up here and second guess it. But you have to make that decision. Three points at that time was very, very valuable. And this crowd at Taylor Field is delighted with what they have witnessed in the season opener. Somewhat reminiscent of what they experienced and enjoyed in the final game of 1989. A Saskatchewan three-point victory over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 43-40 in the Grey Cup game. 35 in the season opener here at Taylor Field and Al Bruno looked to be some upset as he headed quickly off to the Hamilton dressing room. Well, you know, they're down, they, they really came back well in the fourth quarter and then they let it slip away. It's their own fault the game slipped away and that's hard to take sometimes, you know. And, you know, last year three points and three points tonight, that's, that's tough, but it was a heck of a football game. A very entertaining football game to start the 1990 season. John Gregory, Saskatchewan Rock Riders, in defense of the Grey Cup. They won last November in Toronto, off to a successful start to this 1990 season. Two games that were played tonight in the CFL were exciting enough. One in overtime, one by three. You can't beat it. Two tremendously entertaining games to launch the 1990 season. Saskatchewan winning by three.